All right. Today I'm talking about refurbished rifles, and specifically the Mosin Nagan model 1891-30 Ukrainian uh, refurb here as we know them here in the States. These were rifles that were used by the Red Army during World War II, and then after the war they were refurbished and stored away in mines in the Ukraine. In the event that one day the West would invade the USSR and these would be issued to the Soviet people for their defense. Now you can see this one is 1943. It's made at Izhesk Arsenal. And you can see the 1943 sometimes they didn't quite get the stampings perfect at three. It's a little bit cut off there. Sometimes it's mistaken for a five on these. It's not. It's a 1943. They made more of these in 1943 than any other year. That's 9130. You have an M44 with 1943, that's rare, but not the 9130. Now, this particular 1943, as you can see, has a wartime expedient finish on it. What that really means is that they did not have time in the press of war to fully finish the rifles. I mean, all the safety stuff is fine. It's properly heat treated, there's no problems there, but they didn't finish the final finishing. They didn't pretty it up. They needed to get these rifles into the hands of the troops right away because as I'm sure you've seen in a certain movie, sometimes they actually did have to send troops into battle with no weapons. Maybe a knife or a stone or a stick. No rifles. So it was very important to get rifles out and some 1943s could be fully finished and really nice and others can be like this, a little bit rough. They're both interesting and if you're going to fill out a collection of 9130s you really should have both types. Just pretty much dependent on what time of year they were made and how bad the press was at the time. You can see, characteristic of these refurbished rifles, we have that red shellac finish on them. Not every refurb has a red shellac finish. Some will be more blonde, some will be darker red than this. It's just how they made them. You can see the drips in the shellac right there. And and if you look over here, I'm not sure I can make it come out on camera, but that's black paint right there on the cap of the, uh, the handguard, right there, you see it? So that's what the communists used to uh, hide poor bluing jobs, or maybe a little bit of rust speckles there. They slap some black paint on it, typical. And if you look over here, they neglected to remove rust from the spring, and they just shellacked over it. This particular stock has something you don't often see on these. That looks to me like a score mark. It's three regularly spaced markings, look like they were cut with a small knife of some sort. Common enough on some of my Finnish Mosins, but not so much on Soviet ones. Interesting part of the rifle's history, or at least its stock, because when these rifles were refurbished, they stripped them completely of every part. Each part was thrown into a pile of light parts, and they were refurbished by batch. That's just how refurbs are done when you're dealing with tens of thousands of rifles and not five or six. And when they put them back together, they just use whatever parts came to hand. You can see we have a Tula cocking piece on there. The bolt bodies is yes, as is the transfer bar. See if I can open that. And right there, we have a Tula star on the extractor. You know, there's a little, every rifle is different. Some will have more mixed parts than others. Some might not have any mixed parts at all. It's just luck of the draw. And if you see on this particular refurb, the serial numbers have been electro-penciled or engraved right there. You can see some of the old number that they ground off from whatever rifle this originally was on, and it was renumbered with an electro-pencil. Probably done later on in the refurb pro 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 program that ran about, what, 40 years almost. Those numbers were made to match the original barrel serial number. And you can see on the bottom here, we actually have a number that's been lined out. They didn't even bother to grind it off. And they just EP'd, or electro pencil engraved, the new number right next to it. That's called a line out. Again, common enough. Some rifles will have them, some not. Now, with every refurb, you usually get the goodies. Something like this ammunition pouch probably came with it. This is a World War II just clip. Didn't come with the rifle, something I acquired elsewhere. Now, you might have got one of these. There's a little bit of confusion as to what these are. What they are is made for a submachine gun, probably the PPSH. This is not a Mosin tool. Yes, it has a screwdriver, and you can use it to take the rifle apart. But if you have this with your toolkit, you need to put it aside as a collectible, 
and get one that looks like this. This is the Mosin bolt tool and com basic combo tool. This part right here is for your bayonet. That puts your bayonet on and off. You have your screwdriver and these notches right here. That is your firing pin protrusion gauge. You need that. You got to have that. Probably came with a pouch like this with these little tools in it. These are. This is your T-handle for the uh, and your muzzle protector for the cleaning rod. We do not recommend using the issue tools to clean these rifles as these cleaning rods, they are ordnance steel. They're made to be cleaned from the muzzle and that can cause wear to the rifling that you really don't need to do now that we're not at war and nobody's shooting at you. You can get a nice cleaning rod and do it properly and keep the cleaning gear that came with the rifle as the collectibles they should be and nothing else. See how nice that looks? All that shiny shellac is on there, typical of the refurbs. You probably got an oil bottle like this, or maybe a round one. There's a couple different styles. You might even have got a brass one. A lot of times it just depends what the dealers have on hand and what they threw in the box when you got the gun, the rifle. It's your bayonet, of course. That's common enough with these. And this is just something interesting I brought out, in case anybody was interested in what the ammunition for these rifles looked like in World War II. And there you have it. This is a 1945 round Soviet and a couple of 1944 rounds also Soviet. You can see they're the same copper wash steel case stuff that you buy made in the 1970s and 80s surplus. Of course I'm not shooting these, these are collectible. But I just thought it would be interesting, you know, this is the ammunition made to be fired on this rifle. This is World War II issue. Now if I get the bolt out, And if I can get it apart, I may have to put the camera down here a second. I have to uncock the bolt. Okay, I think I got it that time. Last time I tried to do that, I got the camera off by accident. Looks like the firing pin's actually protruding a little too far on this one. And we get the tool here. I'll show you how it works. Uh, if I can get it to focus, that would be nice. Very hard to do when I'm only <laughs> I only have two hands. Uh, Okay. Actually, it's not bad. Let's see if I get a better angle at that. See the firing pin? First, you have to decock the bolt. Easy enough to do. It's not that hard to do. Just decock it so the firing pin pokes up like that. Then we're going to take our bolt tool here. You can see it's got the five notches. It's the three in the, the first three you're going to look at. Now let's put that. Usually they're marked 75 and 95. What you're going to do is use a 75. Put a two little notches right there. I hope you can really see that. What you want to do is have it clear, have that firing pin be able to clear without hanging up on the tool. And that's good. Right there. I want to try to back the camera off and see if I can get a look at that. See? That's clear. You don't want the firing pin to stick up too much. If it sticks up so much it interferes with the tool, then it's not good. It could puncture a primer. But if it's like this, it's all right. I thought it was too high, but in fact it's not. That's perfect. It's good enough. And if there was any kind of a problem with that, you simply unscrew it right here. Screw it in a little tighter, screw it in a little less, a little more, whatever you need to do. It's a very easy bolt to deal with. It's not rocket science. There's no magic involved in it. But you do need this tool, and if you don't have it, you can find one on GunBroker easy enough. They're only a dollar, maybe less. Sometimes you'll get 10 of them for $10 or something like that. And every rifle should have one, but sometimes they screw up and you don't get one. Now let's get to the bayonet. Okay, a lot of times with these rifles, the bayonets aren't the ones that are supposed to be with the rifle. When these come in the crates, these bayonets are fitted at the arsenal and they are numbered to the rifle. But Dealers, they just take them out. They don't want to sort them. They just throw in whatever's there. goes in the box of your rifle. If you happen to get one that's matching number, hey, that's great. But very few dealers now or in the past have bothered to match them. This one actually fits the rifle fairly good. Slide it down like that. See how it's there. And again, I'm doing this one-handed. It's not easy. Push it down and turn it till it locks. See, that's locked in place pretty much. Now I'm going to try to demonstrate how you take that off using this. Okay, slide it down over the bayonet. 
just like that. See how that's on there? The lock kind of holds it. What you would do to get it off is release that lock right there. That's the lock. And then you would turn. <laughs> the whole rifle's turning. Let me hold that a little bit. Push the lock up. Use this tool for a little leverage. And you turn the bayonet off. Now, if the bayonet is not properly fitted to the rifle, it's a little too tight. This tool is going to be pretty much useless to you. Because the bayonet's going to have to be fitted, you're going to have to open it up a little bit. So you have to spread it a little bit right there so it fits on. It could be a real pain in the ass. But once it's properly fitted, this is the tool you use. It has to be tight. You can't have a loose bayonet. It has to be snug fit on there. So you need this tool to get it on and off. All right. And you can see on this rifle, uh, maybe you can't see, but I'll show it, tell you anyway, lots of black paint all over the muzzle. And they really screwed the bluing up on this one. Typical commie rush job. They didn't quite get it right. Sometimes they did things like that. And they tried to cover it up. You can see that this is a wartime stock. There's no sling guard, uh, dog collar guards in the stock there. It's all open, just plain wood. And the front half over here, fore end, all they have is a little piece of metal there. That's all it is. Typical wartime stock. You can see how that shellac isn't perfect on there either. It's bubbling a little bit. There's a lot of grease and oil in that stock from years of field use. They didn't give a damn because really the shellac was only a protectant. They didn't expect it to last. They knew it wouldn't. Shellac in general is not really the best kind of stock finish you could have. It's not very durable. It's good for storage and preservation. That's about it. So you have to be careful with them. When we have these rifles, it's only original once. And once that finishes off of there, it's gone forever. And you see back here, they actually electro penciled the serial number and then they painted over it. You can see that's a Tula book plate on there too. They painted over their own serial number. I guess it was starting to rust, so they figured they'd just slap a coat of paint on it. And you can see this is this rifle. I've actually had it before, the gigantic banner billboard you see these days. Just a dealer applied serial number, and that's it. It's nice and clear. No huge unsightly import marks on there. I think I paid $50 for this from Chris at Trinity Arms. 55 possibly. He was having a sale, and there were lots of 43s around. Like I said, they're the most common year, so people tend to uh, ignore them in favor of some older years and stuff like that. This is a good rifle. It's got a fairly decent bore. It shoots nice. It's got a decent trigger, surprisingly. That could vary greatly on Soviet weapons, from horrible to, to nice. Hardwood stock, of course. This is not a laminate. And uh, let's see. Whoops. That'll about cover it, I guess. I don't want to go any further. It's going to take a 50 minutes to upload this as it is. And that's the refurb. The 9130 Soviet refurb.